Yeah, my name is Howie Carr. I am a uh, talk show host for WRKO and a, uh, a, a uh, syndicated group of stations in New England, in uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont. And I'm also a columnist for the Boston Herald, and I'm the author of the book The Brothers Bulger, which was on the New York Times bestseller list for 11 weeks. It sold about 130,000 copies, and it's still available at fine bookstores everywhere. Well, I grew up all over the place. I was born in Portland, Maine, and uh, I grew up there in Portland, Maine, and in uh, Palm Beach, Florida, where my father worked as a uh, hotel man. And uh, then after the age of about 12, we lived in Deerfield, Massachusetts, and my father ran the school store at Deerfield Academy, and my mother was the secretary to the headmaster. So I've lived, uh, I've lived all over the place. I went to the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. I studied uh, journalism. And uh, when I got out, I had uh, two offers. Uh, one, I could have been a copy boy at the Springfield Union. And they would have paid me 70 bucks a month, and they, or 70 bucks a week. And they told me, uh, we only hire people who can live at home because nobody else could afford to take the job. And I said, you know what, even though I could live at home, I don't think I can afford to take this job. I always love reading the newspapers, you know. I think uh, it's, it's one of those... Uh, one of those trades where it doesn't really require a lot of, uh, of uh, educational background. You know, you, you, if you read newspapers and you have moderate intelligence, you could be a newspaper writer, you could be a reporter, you could be an editor. I read the Boston papers, the Globe, the Evening Globe, the Herald, the Traveler, the Record American, the Sunday Advertiser, all those papers. I, I loved. Uh, I loved. The news, I love the old newspaper business, you know, with a deadline every hour and rewrite men and guys calling in from the road, you know, and uh, edition, uh, one edition uh, coming out every hour. It was great. Those were great days. I think I'm probably more of a radio personality at this point, just just because the the radio has, I mean, to be to be blunt, has declined less than the newspaper industry. It's, it's harder and harder for uh, newspapers to make a go of it, obviously, because, uh, you know, if you're reading it on the Internet, you're not, uh, you're not buying the product, and, it's, and no one yet has figured out a way to, uh, to deliver advertising on the, on the Internet and charge for it the same way you charge for uh, newspaper advertising. It's a, tough, it's a tough racket at this stage. 1-877-469-4322, 1-877-469-4322. That's the toll-free number if you'd like to join us this afternoon here on the Howie Car Show. It's interesting that Mid was talking about uh, crying as he drove through the Fresh Pond Rotary. I mean, it's, it's always got to be more about entertainment. If I, if I don't sound like I'm having a good time on the radio... The listeners are going to know it, and they're not going to be having a good time in their cars. And if they're not having a good time in their cars, they're going to change the channel to somewhere where they can have a good time. So I've always got to be up, and I, and I always am up. I, I understand how radio works. We've, uh, we've got a, a fun-filled show here today. Jerry Williams was the king. If Jerry were alive today, he would uh, probably be nationally syndicated. He would be, if not as big as Rush Limbaugh, he would certainly be as big as uh, Don Imus or, uh, or, or Sean Hannity or Michael Savage. He, he, was, uh, he was far superior to anyone I ever heard. I mean, he grew, I grew up listening to him. And, uh, and, and I mean, when I... You know, when I first started sitting here in this studio with him across the way, I mean, it was like, you know, if you were, if it'd been like, if I was a, a baseball player, it would have been like being in uh, in, in center field, uh, uh, looking over at Ted Williams. You know, I mean, he to me, he was he was Ted Williams as as far as uh, radio goes, and he he was the best. There's no there's no question about it. I, I don't know how it's going to play out. You can't. You know, bloggers are okay, but they need uh, they they need raw material to uh, to work off of, and there's there's got to be somebody who still goes out and uh, and gets the news, and uh, that's the that's the question probably for the next twenty years is who is going to pay the person who goes out and gets the news, and how is how are the people who pay the reporters going to make money in this new environment? And it's and it's it's still an open question, and whoever figures it out is going to be a billionaire, obviously. I, I think Boston is not what it used to be in in terms of uh, politics. It's it, it's more of a, a uh, uh, an outpost now of corporate America. It's not it's a lot of the uh, a lot of the powerful institutions. Whether it's you know the Boston Globe is now owned by uh, by the New York Times. You know there you know Filene's is gone. Jordan Marsh is gone. 
John Hancock is gone. Gillette is gone. It's it, it's a very different place than it used to be, and you have a very uh, transient population now. And I, I think that's what where you see in uh, city council elections, like the one we had in November, where I think you had uh, maybe ten or twelve percent of the population turned out. By the way, it's not too late to order your copy of the book, The Brothers Bulger. Eleven weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. It's uh, available mostly in paperback now. It's still available some places in hardcover. Go to our website, howiecard.com, if you want to see where to get. I started uh, covering uh, covering organized crime when I was uh, working at City Hall, covering Kevin White. He employed a lot of guys with criminal backgrounds in his final term. And uh, slowly, I discovered that uh, being a political reporter at City Hall was basically be the same as being a crime reporter. And uh, when I moved down to, to up to, to the State House, uh, you know, Billy Bulger was there, and I noticed uh, everybody was giving him a wide berth and not talking about his brother. And uh, then I found out why when uh, Whitey Bulger threatened to kill uh, one of our reporters at the Herald, you know, for, for looking into a murder. And I, something I, I, I wrote about in, in my book, The Brothers Bulger. And uh, then I started writing about it, even though he threatened reporters. And uh, pretty soon I started getting death threats, too. And uh, I had to start driving home a different way. And, uh, they, you know, there have been claims that they, that they had me staked out in my house. They were going to pick me off from the, the cemetery across from my house. And they were going to use they were going to use a C4 explosives to take me out. They were going to put it in a basketball and just blow up my house. And you know, when people threaten to kill you, it kind of gets your attention. And if you would like to call and uh, leave a message on the Chump line, the that's the recorded voicemail message service of the Howie Car Show. We may or may not play your your message at a later hour of the show today. And every Congress has mandated uh, Wi-Fi internet in cars, and I think it's going to have the same kind of uh, redefining impact on radio that uh, the, the uh, law that required FM radios in car, cars did back in the 1970s. So it, it, it'll be like news, all newspapers now are local because you can get them at 6 in the morning you know, in, your, in your pajamas. It, it, when you can get any radio station in the country in your car, it's going to be a whole different ball game. I, I don't know how it's going to change. It's I, I think that's one reason why uh, radio stocks are in the uh, toilet. And uh, and I don't know I don't know how much of a market they'll be for local radio. I think it's a radio whatever it's going to however it succeeds it's going to just have to be entertainment. And the only one that can fill the bill is Mr. Romney between his business. No, I'm just no, Bill. I'm just asking the question: Is it going to help him or hurt him? I mean, it, I don't. I've always said, being an old newspaper guy, that uh, any town or city that has two newspapers, no matter how bad they are, is better off than any city that has one newspaper, no matter how good it is. Because if you've only got one newspaper in town, all you got to get to is one guy. It'd be like having one cop in town. You know, you're going to sooner or later, there's going to be a problem with that cop. And sooner or later, there's going to be a problem with the newspaper. You, you need competition. That's what you need. And, and this is what we have in the Democrat Party. Hillary's a traitor. Obama's a buffoon. Hillary's a buffoon. Huckabee is a shyster. I wouldn't buy you to carry him. And, 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 <laughs> I got to hold you there, Bill. Thanks for the call. Michael, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Michael. Captain, how are you? 